Hello everybody, how are you doing? Hope you're all doing good, looking after yourselves, and feeling awesome. Mikey Black here, and we're back with Magic Motherhood and Mayhem today, and uh, we have to get ready to go on an adventure uh, with our baby. That's, <laughs> it's going to be quite the thing. Um, I left things on a miniature cliffhanger last time, um, with this decision to be made. Whether to tell Raoul that we can overcome everything or tell him that we need to change plans. I can never say we need to change plans. We can do anything. We're stronger together. And we, uh, we'll get through this with bloody blunt force positivity. Because that's the only way to get ahead in life. Raoul, I'm positive we can prove them wrong and conquer everything. See, that's the spirit. Sure, we've been arguing about the baby. But we're new parents. It's like a crash course, but we'll manage together. It's the best way. Ralph sighs heavily, rubbing his furry head. <sighs> Feels like that's all we do these days. Uh, you know, it's kind of working, right? I move closer, grabbing his hand. It's a phase, Ralph. Parenthood is messy and challenging, but we're in this together. We'll find our rhythm. He gives me a skeptical look, Sloan Shua. Well, you better buck up and stop being the sword down in the dubs, Buster. <laughs> Just remember, this is a two-way street. <laughs> it's you and me, both in this. I hope you're right, Alma. I just want what's best for us. And you think I don't? It's finally time to go. We managed to make Sheila fall asleep. Raoult is still packing his own things. I told him not to do everything last minute, yet here we are. I, I, I couldn't imagine chucking everything in last minute. I've got to, I, I've got to be pinpoint. Everything's got to be planned out. Look, I'm not, I don't need to plan out every single thing. If, if This is obviously different. This is an adventure. We're going to save the kingdom. But like, if it's just a holiday or something, it's like, I don't need to know. I don't need to say, right, Monday morning we do this. Monday afternoon we do that. Tuesday morning we do this. Tuesday, I'm, not, I'm not that thick. But when it comes to pre-planning stuff, it's like I'm definitely ahead of the curve on that that stuff. I don't like spontaneity in my day to day life, but vacations are different. It's like I could I could I could let myself go a little bit on vacation, but day to day I'm not the kind of person who just can get up on a morning and have somebody say to me, "Let's do this today." I'm like, "Oh, it's too short notice. I can't do it today. Let's do it next week when I know it's coming." Already, you. I give him a half-hearted nod, adjusting Sheila's blanket as if shielding her from more than just the morning chill before sending her to the pocket dimension. As ready as I'll ever be. That didn't sound very convincing. Hey, uh, I don't know if it's going to be like the old times, but we'll get through this, okay? Just like the old times. You just said it, you weren't sure if it was going to be just like the old times. You can't just turn on a dime like that. So, which one is like the old times? <laughs> Thanks, Amma, for catching that. I mean... Uh... Uh, sleep deprivation's a bitch. Just kidding. <laughs> I know you'll have my back. Yeah, that. That would have been the easier thing to say, Ralt. As we gear up for our journey, our footsteps fall into a rhythm that is more of a march than a stroll down memory lane. And now, added to our motley crew, is a tiny bundle whose future is as uncertain as a tipsy elf walking on a tightrope. Don't know why it's specifically a tipsy elf. I feel like a tipsy elf would still be quite elegant. But, you know, maybe a tipsy troll walking on a tightrope. That would have been fun, funnier because it's got more alliteration. A tipsy troll tiptoeing on a tightrope. <laughs> there you go. Upon entering the clearing... Ralt and I feel a sense of unease as if we were being observed by someone. Also, the music's ramped up. This is like battle music. His beastly instincts kick in as he prepares for a fight, clutching his claw blades. Figures. He's always up for a brawl. And he's got some, he's probably got a little bit of pent up frustration to get out somewhere. So, what better method than to beat up some bad guys? Before we can even strategize, out pop these bandits. 
with rusty swords and clubs that pose no real threat. They look just... They look like they just raided a charity shop for weapons. All oh, right, well, this is like the lower level enemies. <laughs> Ralph's expression darkens, but I cannot help but let out a weary sigh. Seriously now? Bandits? Couldn't they have chosen a less inconvenient time? It's like, uh, guys, we're trying to save... So we're trying to save a whole bunch of people from being destroyed by a golem here. Could you maybe, you know... Not... Stop right there, you valuables. Now. Yeah, well, you picked the wrong travellers to have a go at, you know that? Hey there, do you gentlemen have any idea who you're messing with? The leader of the bandits squints at me, clearly perplexed. Uh, no. Should we? How long has it been since we saved the kingdom? Are there not tales told of us? Do bards not sing wonderful songs about how amazing we were? Ah, I mean ah, not were, definitely are, still are. Ever heard of the Crown Breakers? Huh. I thought we were just supposed to rob people. No one said we made some famous heroes. Um. I mean, if that's what you're going to take out of this encounter, then again, good for you for instilling the positivity into the conversation. Consider yourselves educated then. Now scram before Rout decides to give you a lesson in brawling. Rout's eyes light up, ready for action. The bandits exchange nervous looks, wondering if they picked the wrong bunch to mess with. I mean, isn't it clear and obvious? <laughs> you don't look like the heroes people we're talking about. Look at those eye bags. Don't judge a hero by how tired they are. That's probably a fatal mistake. I mean, he's not wrong. Attack! All right. Your funerals. As the bandits insist on their robbery, I roll my eyes and take a step back. Rout, they're all yours. Yeah, he looks like he needs it. Hell yeah! Ah! Without a word, Rout moves with a fluid grace that belies his size, unsheathing his deadly claw blades. <clears throat> The bandits, now realising they've seriously underestimated their targets, falter for a moment before Ralph strikes. Faltering for a moment was their second mistake. Actually, they made three mistakes. The first mistake was even trying to uh, rob us. The second mistake was to continue to try and rob us when we gave them a chance to not, and then faltering before trying to attack. Yeah, that's probably the last mistake. He cuts through them effortlessly, and before long... They become strangely silent, with only the sound of the wind rustling through the trees and birds sing. He's never changed. Always the one-man army. I always love seeing that side of him. Oh, eh, yeah, get your motor running, huh? No. No. Please, spare me. <clears throat> ah, and nobody was spared. After knocking down the final bandit, Ralph tidies his claws and puts them back into their sheaths with a satisfied grunt. He meets my eyes, grinning from ear to ear. See, there we go. That's the route we wanted. Well, that's that. That certainly is that. Not exactly how I planned our morning stroll. Da! Ah, little bit of excitement. Never a dull moment. Scene change. Oh, oh, maybe not. Sorry. Wait, hang on. How come there's so many clicks? Ah. As we continue on our journey, the adrenaline from confronting those bandits slowly dissipates, leaving me with an inexplicable sense of fatigue. Not quite used to the adventure and lark anymore. You know, both the both of us are more used to those kind of down uh, office style jobs now. Not used to being on the road. Oh. I lose my balance and suddenly my legs give out, causing me to collapse with a loud thud. Okay, well, I wasn't expecting that. Oops. Oma, you okay? I just need a nap. What's it to you? I try to catch my breath, the rush of exertion leaving me panting. I... I think so. Just... Need a moment. Shall we pitch a tent? It's 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 like it's literally still the morning. We've been walking for like an hour. It's like okay, let's get the tent up and call it a day. 
You never used to go down like this. What's going on? Hello. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry! Maybe juggling being a mother and a mage is more tiring than anticipated. You're kidding. Oh, I wish I am. Breastfeeding Sheila drains my mana. And maintaining the pocket dimension she's in? It's draining me faster than a bottomless goblet at a dwarven feast. Ah, <sighs> that's true. I didn't even think about the exertion of the pocket dimension. And I guess despite the fact that she was saying about the breastfeeding being uh, a drain on her, uh, her mana, I thought she wasn't going to breastfeed, but I, I guess she still did. I wonder if she just did that because Ralph was kind of insistent about it. Maybe she just felt like she didn't want to let him down. So this is the true reason why you don't want to breastfeed? I mean, she said it. She thinks she was lying about it. I'd like to feel like you guys have a pretty, like, open communication going on here. I don't think you should be lying or would even think that the other person was lying to you about something. I nod slowly. Why didn't you say something before? Well, she did! I did. <laughs> I said that it drained my mana. That was literally... Literally the sentence that she said. Now, well, <sighs> I must have not paid enough attention, you know, with the job and being sleep deprived. Oh, oh, always with the excuses. <laughs> I get it. We're both tired. I'm sorry, Alma. If anything happens, I, I won't forgive myself. They need to stop talking about being tired because they're making me sleepy. I know. For now, let me sleep. Yeah, it's the middle of the morning, but it's fine. Let's just have it. Just have a nap. Just lie down in the middle of the road. I'm sure no more bandits will come. Amma? Hey, Amma, wake up! She said let her sleep, so let her sleep. Huh. Where am I? I feel like I'm being cradled. Is this how Sheila feels when I carry her? What? What? Swanky. Where are we? Opening my eyes, I find myself against Ralph's chest, his arms securely holding me close. As I shifted my head slightly, his fur tickles my cheek, causing a faint smile to form on my face. Fuzzy. Hey, you're safe now. Don't need a plushie to take to bed when you've got a route. I look around and found ourselves, uh, found ourselves already in a room. Looks like some kind of inn. You need to rest. And this seemed like the best spot for both you and our little one. Aren't you bloody thoughtful? You big, bloody, dumb cutie pie. And Sheila? I can see her from here. Took her out of the pocket dimension. Glancing down, I see Sheila peacefully nestled in his other arm. Sound asleep. I feel relieved when I see her unharmed and unaware of the chaos that had just taken place. He gently puts me to bed. Then carefully took Sheila in next to me so as not to disturb her sleep. Look at that. Look how gentle and bloody f amazing he is. I'm going to head out for a bit to clear my head. You'll be okay. Right? Uh, yeah. You will be too, right? I certainly hope you got some rest while I got some rest. Sure. Go ahead and solve the world's problems out there. Just make sure you're back in time for breakfast. And ready for another full day of walking. Don't forget that we're on an adventure slash mission here. Ralph manages a faint smile at my attempted humour. Though his eyes still betray the weariness he carries. Maybe he should just stay here and get some sleep. Would it miss it for the world? As he steps out into the night, my eyelids grow heavier and I finally fall into a deep sleep. Oh boy, how much sleep did we get? 
In the middle of the night, Sheila's frantic cries tear through the silence of the inn. Hope the walls are thick. My heart races as I quickly sit up. Beside me, Ralph grabs her, clearly panicking. Sheila! Huh? Ralph embraces her tightly, attempting to calm her, but her wails intensify, rebounding against the walls. <laughs> She's never cried like this before. Really? Sounded like the same way she was crying earlier in the game. But I guess the parents would know better than me. We try everything. Feeding her, changing her nappy, even a soothing spell. But nothing seems to calm her down. It's clear she's in pain, but what could it be? Oh no, I hope it's not one of those many, 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 many fun illnesses that Babas can get. Colic? Calm down, Amaranth. You've got this. It's in a book you've read somewhere about childcare. Uh, what do we do now? I don't know. B maybe if we cry too, she'll stop. Uh, hold on. Let me try to remember. Tears blur my vision as I stroke Sheila's back, whispering futile reassurances. Calm down, sweetheart. Mama's here. We're here. But Sheila's cries continue relentlessly, her tiny body shaking with inconsolable anguish. It pains me to see her like this. We're supposed to protect her, yet here we are, clueless. Listen, happens to first-time parents all the time. All the time. They'll be sometimes like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Don't worry about it. Useless. We're bad parents who focus more on ourselves rather than our baby girl. I'm a failure. Uh, Hama? Tears pour down my cheeks as I watch Sheila cry inconsolably. It feels like my heart is breaking with each wail. I feel it. Sorry, Ralph. I, I can't do this anymore. Sheila's cries seem to grow louder and my tears flow faster. I'm sorry, Sheila. I'm a bad What the? Before either of us could speak again, Ralph's expression twisted with panic. And without a word, he bolts from the room, shoving Sheila towards me. What? Huh? What? Ralph? What happened? Things were so good! He's leaving. He's abandoning us. How could he leave me like this? I'm failing. Sheila needs me and I can't even comfort her. Just as hope threatened to slip away completely, the inn door burst open. The innkeeper stands there, concern clearly shown on her face. Ralph follows closely behind her. Your husband told me everything. Uh, 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 wait, why? How? Why did he go straight to the inn? Did, did, did he have some kind of indication that the innkeeper could help with this stuff? Help. Please. We can't seem to calm her down. Have you tried a pacifier? A what? A dummy. I think I have one. It was our son's. Hold on. What? what? Oh, teething! Oh, is she teething? Is that what it is? She leaves and soon returns with the item. It can sometimes soothe babies by giving them something to suck on. She shows us how to gently offer it to Sheila with practiced ease. I remember when my son was just a little one. He was such a bundle of energy and emotions. But there were nights like this, when nothing seemed to soothe him. Colic, they called it. Colic! Colic! Mikey got it! Mikey got it right! And for a second though, I thought it might be teething. Um, it's an interesting thing though, pacifiers, d uh, dummies. I've heard mixed kind of feelings, like... Uh, uh, our little one, not so little now, but um, when they were a baby, uh, never bothered about dummies. Never wanted, no, we tried a couple of times, but just kept spitting them out. 
So we never really had to, we never, we didn't force the issue, so. But I know it's something that really does calm some kids down. But, like, I've heard stories about, like, if, I guess it's about how often you use them. Um, something like it could, uh, make the teeth come in. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of like, they were kind of, the teeth would be around where the dummy would be in there. Because they put it at the front of the mouth. Anyway, I, I'm not anywhere near science enough to be able to explain it properly or back up any of it. It's just something I read. It could be complete bollocks. But um, I was kind of, I feel kind of lucky that Ruby, our little one, was never fussed about them. But he's hoping it helps Sheila anyway. For a while, she explains about colic and offers tips on soothing techniques. Then she turns to me. I know it's hard. Parenthood is full of surprises, but you're doing great. Together we try the pacifier and miraculously Sheila's cries begin to subside. It's almost like a little miracle as she begins to relax, the small fists slowly uncurling. Thank you so much, ma'am. You're most welcome. Please, let me know if she's throwing fits again and I'll see what I can do. Bit of whiskey will help. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And Mikey does not condone this. <laughs> the room feels heavy after the innkeeper finally leaves after getting Sheila to sleep. I slump against the wall next to Raoult, our shoulders touching. The stress we've been under melts away, leaving us tired and barely breathing. We did it. Somehow. I think you'll find the innkeeper did it. Ralph nods, looking like he's been through a war. Never thought we'd survive. Some nights could certainly feel like that. This is like when we fought Baelor, the Lord of Dragons. Except this time, the dragon was our own baby. <laughs> At least this time we didn't have to worry about our asses burning. No. Just the cries that could wake the dead. <laughs> but we made it through. Same way we handled Gaylor. Yeah. I turned to Raoul, grabbing his hand, holding on like it's the only thing keeping me from falling apart. I thought you left me hanging back there. I didn't know what to do. Yeah, Raoul, maybe you should have said you had an idea or something before you just ran out of the room. It was a little bit abrupt and it was a little bit scary. He squeezes my hand back, trying to be reassuring. You're not a bad mother, Alma. You're just... We're just a pair of amateurs. I guess it'll be better when we figured it out. You can keep figuring it out for years and years and years as well. You'll, you can still be good, but there's always going to be something you're like, Oh, I didn't know this. Or, oh, I quite, don't quite know how to handle this scenario. I let out a bit of a laugh. Half relief, half disbelief, and lean into his shoulder. Yeah, figured it out it makes it sound so easy. <laughs> he chuckles and sighs at the end of it. Thank you, Ami. We kind of heard that. <laughs> hey. You know, when I was out earlier, I was so mad at myself. When you fell, I realized I was so damn ignorant to whatever you were going through. I don't think I'm the best guy for you. Maybe you're better off with someone more reliable. Maybe this isn't the best time to have this particular discussion. And then, with Sheila crying, with you crying, I felt like I was telling you both. I feel the same way. Wouldn't it feel that way if I had paid more attention? I don't know. Maybe I suck at this parenting thing. What do I know, huh? I mean, my dad died when I was a kid, so I don't exactly know how being one is like. Well, some people's dads don't die when they're a kid, and they still don't know how to be a good dad because they have shitty dads. It's kind of a it's kind of a toss it's kind of a toss up sometimes. Mine was alright. He was pretty good. He's one of those dads who tried to be more like a mate than a dad. Which can be good. Can be good. I'm trying to strike that kind of balance too as a parent. It's like... 
I'm fortunate that Ruby has a lot of similar interests. I know not all kids grow up to like the same things their parents do, but they're big into video games and um, uh, memes and and uh, a lot of the same YouTubers that uh, I, I like. They also like so it's kind of, we have we we've got common ground which is good. It's it's like if there's any conversation that needs to be had, at least there's some commonality we've got there. Uh, I know it's not always the easiest because sometimes kids just drift away from you and just get into things that you don't know anything about. I mean, you could try and learn about them, and I've, I've done a fair share of that too. Uh, but when they're this, when they're Sheila's age, these little babas that can't communicate with you, can't tell you what's wrong. Those are, those are rough times. They are, they are, but they're still very rewarding. And you know, it's easy enough as well to look back afterwards when they're a little bit more grown up and talking back or just going up to their rooms and just ignoring you. Where you think, ah, I kind of miss it when they couldn't do nothing. <laughs> yeah, fun and games, it's all fun and games. Everyone's parents die, Route. Life expectancy isn't exactly high in a world full of dragons and monsters. Don't make me feel like these characters are going to die super soon. Well, shit. You don't have to be your dad. You just have to be Sheila's dad. Yeah, that's it. You can take a couple of cues from your parents, and if you've got good parents and stuff, it's it's definitely fine to take a few pages from their book. But at the end of the day, you got to find your own rhythm and your own style. It's the same with anything in life, really. Parenthood's the same. You just find your own groove. I think that's enough for the both of us. Hmm. Doesn't sound convinced, does he? All right. Okay. Not convinced, but going along with it. We eventually surrender to sleep, leaning on each other as if we are each other's favorite pillows. Ah, oh, it's the best kind of sleep. As fatigue sets in, the evening's tension begins to fade into the background like a distant memory. While we fall asleep, I ponder on the conversations we have uh, have had, and those we haven't, all tangled up in this crazy ride we call life. And then we slept. The following day arrives and we are prepared to confront whatever lies ahead, even if we are still only half awake. A couple of glasses of that wine might go down nice. We make sure Sheila's all fed and clean before we set off. Ralph checks her nappy like he's diffusing a bomb, and I give her the last bit of milk we have. Shouldn't we buy more then? I mean, this is, isn't this still the first day? <laughs> Sorry, it's the second day now because we've slept. We make sure to see the innkeeper and shower her with thanks. You really saved us last night, ma'am. Of course, it was my pleasure. You two are a lot tougher than you think. I wish I had some of that in me. <laughs> Keep it up. Her words hit me, giving me a boost. Ralph nods beside me, clearly feeling the same. Thanks for everything. You've given us hope. With a final exchange of smiles, we gather our belongings and set out on the next portion of our journey. Oh, rain. Rain! While we walk and feel proud of our excellent parenting abilities to keep Sheila clean and happy, of course, the heavens decide it's time for a shower. It's always the bloody way. And I'm not talking about the gentle, soothing type you enjoy with lavender-scented soap and candles. No, this is the full-on, drench-everything-in-sight, torrential downpour kind. Ralph and I exchange a look and then scramble into action. He's got Shirley in his arms like a precious artifact, and I'm frantically searching for any nearby shelter. We've decided not to use Pocket Dimension if we're not able to, as not to cause me to faint again. That's probably a sensible idea, too. Over there! Oh, over where? What did you see? I point to a small overhang that looks barely big enough for a couple of squirrels, let alone three people and a baby. Three people and a baby? Two people and a baby? Who's this mysterious third person? Our invisible friend, Norbert. He needs space too. Well, better than nothing. We hurry towards it while I'm avoiding puddles that are intent on soaking my shoes. 
water water does is water is what water is is what it does water wet Ralph is performing a strange dance to protect Sheila from getting wet I don't think I've ever seen him move so quickly we finally huddle together under the tiny shelter dripping water like we're part of some absurd wet rope contest damn the goddess damn the heavens damn I think Ralph would win a wet rope contest you know, none of that language. Little ears, you know. Ah, it's fine. She'll forget all of those words, I'm sure. Too young, too young for those to sink in. D probably, definitely. He rolls his eyes, but there's a smirk playing on his lips. Sorry, bub. Your old dad will keep it nice and hush. So, bub, is that, is that a Wolverine reference? <laughs> I mean, Ralt is pretty... <laughs> Yep, okay. All right, I'll give that one a pass. Uh, as in, that one, that one I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> I chuckle. Tried to shield Sheila from the worst of the rain as we huddle together under our makeshift shelter. At least we're not being struck by lightning. Don't tempt fit. Good <laughs> grief. Immediately after I speak, a dazzling flash lights up the sky accompanied by a loud clap of thunder that reverberated through the air. Sheila startles in Ralph's arms, her tiny fists clutching at his shirt as she lets out a startled cry. Oh. I'm sorry, goddess, for we are blasphemous. <sighs> Ralph shoots me a look that's equal parts disbelief and amusement. Damn. <clears throat> Blessed goddess can't take a joke. <sighs> yes, in land. I stroke Sheila's hand, uh, hand, head, either way, soothingly, my heart racing from the unexpected scare. Oh, we're sorry, sweetheart. It's just that, yeah. Hopefully you'll grow up and love a good thunderstorm. I bloody love it. I love it. I'm always sitting at the window watching the rain and the... Ah, oh, I love storms. The sound of the rain oddly soothes her. And Sheila soon falls asleep. With the help of some... Is that meant to be calming magic or what? No, warming magic would make sense if it's chilly from the rain, of course. After the lightning strike, with rain still falling, we stand there and Ralph lets out a long sigh. See, this is the thing, right? Our first day of travelling, Armour passed out because of being overtired. Our second day of travelling, we have to stop and take shelter in a storm where it, because we don't want Sheila to catch a cold or get soaking wet. Whereas it's just been the two bus, it probably would have been no problem. So we're, we're behind schedule now. I used to be afraid of thunderstorms, you know. Oh. How come I've never heard about this? I was too manly to admit it before. I got over it when I joined the party. The night my village got attacked, it was like this too. Oh, okay, now I feel bad for making fun of them for it. Oh. I... I I'm sorry. You'd have to remember that, and... You're not responsible for whatever your elders did long ago, Ama. Ooh, law. We're getting some law. He reaches out and gently touches my cheek. His touch warm and comforting despite the chill of the rain. I'm a lot stronger now. That doesn't scare me anymore. Besides, I've got you and Sheila now. I swallow hard, struggling to find the right words. Yes, of course. <laughs> That'll do. We've both lost our villagers to a five-year war between elves and beastmen who valiantly fought over territory. Tales spread of epic, epic matches between the elven archers and beastmen berserkers, each side trying to outdo the other in feats of bravery. But it wasn't as heroic as everyone remembered. Children lost their parents. And vice versa. In the end, the elves and beastmen came to a truce. It wasn't because the elders suddenly saw the array in their ways, or discovered mutual respect. No. It was because a clever human trader discovered the contested area and quickly began charging high fees for rent. Oh... Trust a human to come along and fuck everything up. 
That sounds about right. So the elves and beastmen begrudgingly put down their weapons and fern-themed battle banners to join forces against a newfound common enemy. Capitalism. Now that's a fight I can get behind. And we all lived awkwardly ever after, sharing the territory while silently complaining about property taxes and the benefits of composting. <laughs> that is not where I expected the story to go, but you know what? I'm here for it. Note to self, we should build Wernick more. <laughs> you definitely should. Take him for every penny he's got. Just anyway, leave the food for him. We should conserve our energy. I glance at Rout, who's using his large frame to block the rain. Water drips from his beastman fur. Beastman fur. Creating puddles at his feet. I never knew my husband could look even more attractive. I probably forget because of all the bickering we've had. Alright, calm down. He's looking all. He's like, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm just picturing so many cheesy 80s movie moments with like the hair flick when it's, it's wet and stuff and like flipping some, some like just generic 80s song playing over the top. <laughs> it's like you can't ravage him here. One, Sheila's right there. And two, it's not quite the weather for it. Another clap of thunder rolls overhead and instinctively we draw closer together. And I close my eyes again. Are we just having nice little naps under here? It sounds kind of relaxing, to be honest. The rain has finally stopped, leaving a chilly dampness in the air. Bah, eerie. Rain, no rain. Just as we begin to relax, a low guttural growl shattered the post-storm tranquility. Can we not catch a break? It's just one thing straight into another. I tighten my grip on my staff, channeling magic into its core. Beside me, Rout unsheathes formidable claw blades. Pocket dimension, now. Zoop. I quickly tuck Sheila in the pocket dimension so the creature won't see her. What kind of creature is it, pray tell? I'm fully charged. I can fight. You sure? Positive. With a sudden movement... A Jabberwock emerged from the foliage, its scales gleaming in the fading light. A Jabberwock? Oh, jeez, couldn't have been anything a little bit less dangerous. Huh? Its hungry eyes lock onto us, wings unfurling with a menacing hiss. I take a deep breath, adrenaline rushing through me. All right, beastie. Prepare to be thoroughly disappointed in your choice of dinner. With the flick of my staff, arcs of lightning crackle to life, dancing along the staff's length before shooting towards the Jabberwock. Rout lunges forward with a primal roar, claws slashing through the air. The creature recoils, shrieking in pain. Once again, I release bolts of electricity from my staff, nearly dividing the forest in half. Oh, oh, don't, don't take too much of the forest down, we need trees. The Jabberwock is pushed back by the lightning attack, trembling from the force. The atmosphere is filled with leftover energy, leaving behind a slight smell of burned ash. As long as we didn't singe Ralt as well by accident. Uh oh, are we getting tired? Armor, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you sure? Following the spell, I immediately sense the effort draining my mana reserves. Then tell him you're not okay, so he can focus on his side of things a bit more. Ralt's concerned gears meet mine briefly. His furrowed brow a silent question. No, this won't do. Stay back. Ralph charges toward the monster, but he doesn't realize that he is in a direct patch of attack. The Jabberwock lands a blow on him with its tail. My heart skips a beat as I see him stagger, a large cut on his arm. If we let him get the expensive one... Wait, no, was that an option? My brain... Because remember when we made him buy the slightly cheaper claw blade? Rout! Stay back! I've got this! I hope so. My heart races as I watch Ralph face off against the monstrous Jabberwock. I've seen him do this before, countless times. But why does it feel so different now that we're married and have a child together? 
Yeah, it's funny, isn't it, how things change like that? Like, in your own brain. When you're young and full of vigour, and nothing seems to phase you, and then you get a bit older, it's like, oh, you know, that might be a little bit risky. Gripping my staff tightly, I hold back, hoping and praying that he'll come out of this in one piece. Valk glides gracefully despite his large size, his claws cutting through the air in precise movements. Just finish it already. Yeah, get on with it. The Jabberwock fights back aggressively, using its large body and sharp teeth. One wrong move can be deadly. If he loses focus, he'll be dead. But Ralt, bless his stubborn heart, is in it for the long haul. His fur is matted with sweat and blood, but he shows no signs of backing down. Driven by a combination of adrenaline and sheer determination, he pushes forward, his movements becoming almost instinctual. Hey, if this fight's so hard, just think what the golem's gonna be like. You could get himself killed. I should Uh oh, is this decision time? Whoa! Wow. Alright. Sheesh. No need to cry about it. Before I am able to cast a spell, Rout delivers a final desperate strike, and the beast is defeated, falling to the ground. Hell yeah! I still got it! And there's us looking horrified. I hurry to Rout's side, feeling a wave of relief wash over me. He's hurt, breathing heavily, but alive. You stubborn fool! Ralph manages a weak grin, clearly exhausted. Told you. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. Easy. Charging in without a plan. Haven't we been through this many times before? I mean, when you get when you get bloody jump scared by a Jabberwock, I don't think you've got much time to plan, do you? Hey, your magic is limited. You always say it my improvisation anyway. I curse quietly. Torn between admiration for his bravery and frustration at his recklessness. Just land somewhere in the middle of that. Frustratedly admiring. You could have died. Do you ever think about the risks? Clearly not in the heat of the moment, no. We're both orphans. Try not to invoke the same fate to Sheila. Yeah, but we've been through worse situations before. I wouldn't worry. And Sheila wouldn't have been an orphan if just Ralt had died. Would have been fine. She still would have had 50% of her parents left. Ralt's grin widens. Yeah, we're not going to... Yeah, I'll add it. I, I, He's on an adrenaline rush right now. Sometimes your trust in luck borders on insanity. That's why I love him though, isn't it? Luck, skill, what's the difference? I kneel beside Ralt. My hands glowing with healing magic. His mood looks serious, but I'm relieved to see him still joking around. I think it would take a lot to stop him from joking around, to be honest. You're impossible. You wouldn't want me any other way. Ow! <laughs> Ralt chuckles softly, wincing a bit as my magic begins to work its soothing charm. Yeah, sounded very soothing. You know what? You're right. Next time... I lean in and place a gentle kiss on his cheek. Try not to make my heart skip a beat like that. Unless it's because you're looking particularly hunky. I'll try. As we trudge through the dense forest, we stumble upon a serene lake sparkling under the midday sun. After deciding that it's safe, we take Sheila out of the pocket dimension. Our little whirlwind plays among butterflies, giggling like there's no tomorrow. Look at her go. She's growing up fast. Scary, isn't it? Just like her father. Reckless and curious. Ha. Huh. We settle on a mossy rock by the water, a breeze rustling through the trees. Ralph stretches out while I relax, soaking in the tranquility. You know, this takes me back to our early adventures. Remember that hidden lake in the mountains? How could I forget? Wernick insisted he could catch fish with his bare hands. Hey, I can. Don't doubt me. 
Ah, oh, yes. I remember that day as if it was yesterday. Are we going to have a flashback? We are on a flashback. Well, I'd say this is where I'm going to call it for now. Scene change. Scene change break time. So, uh... Yeah, wow, this is this is so this is so wonderful. This is so wonderful building in your own experiences as a parent into a game like this. And like I said last time, building a fantasy, build it into a fantasy setting is like, I, I just love it. I just love this concept so much. Um, so this is this is this is great. This is great fun. Um, if you want to play this game yourselves, uh, I will once again pop a link to it in the description below so you can go give it a play. Um, there are choices to be made, so you can. Maybe pick the different routes to me and get a different ending. It's one of those kind of games, right? You know, visual novels. Choose your own adventure games, really, aren't they? So, um, yeah. Thanks for popping along and hanging out with me for some more of this super fun game. Yeah, I love and appreciate all of you. Uh, take care of yourselves. And I'll see you very soon for, for more of this. Cool. Toodles. <laughs>